For nearly 99% of human history, progress moved at a crawl. Generations lived and died using the same stone tools, barely altering the world around them. Imagine a single design for a hand axe lasting 100,000 years, while bands of just half a person per square kilometer wandered a vast, empty earth. Yet today, we leap from the first powered flight to walking on the moon in a single lifetime. Why was human progress so painfully slow for millions of years until it skyrocketed beyond anything our ancestors could have imagined? The answer is not what most people think, and the real reason may change how you see our place in history. Across the Pleistocene landscape, survival demanded constant vigilance. At Terra Amata, on the Mediterranean coast, 380,000 years ago, bands of early humans constructed oval shelters from branches and stones, arranging hearths at their center. These camps provided warmth and protection for a few dozen individuals, but their presence on the land was fleeting. Archaeologists uncovered evidence of carefully maintained fires, yet each occupation layer tells the same story. Groups arrived, built temporary shelters, then moved on as resources thinned. The population density rarely climbed above half a person per square kilometer, leaving vast stretches of land empty. Their knowledge isolated. At Box Grove in southern England, 500,000 years ago, a different scene unfolds. Here, the remains of a single Homo heidelbergensis tibia bear the unmistakable scars of carnivore teeth. The injury suggests a harsh reality. Even after a successful hunt, early humans were not always the top predators. The site preserves the debris of a large-scale butchery, where dozens may have gathered to process a horse carcass. Scatters of flint flakes reveal skilled toolmakers at work, yet the tools themselves, hand axes and simple scrapers, follow familiar patterns, unchanged for millennia. Innovations, when they appeared, risked vanishing with the group that carried them. Further east, at Skoningen in Germany, wooden spears dating back 400,000 years rest beside butchered horse bones. These weapons, carefully crafted from spruce, balanced for throwing, speak to remarkable woodworking skill. Yet even such advances remained rare and often isolated. The challenges of daily life, finding food, avoiding predators, enduring climate swings, left little room for experimentation. With each group scattered and mobile, new ideas rarely spread far. Most technological change, when it happened at all, was measured in tens of thousands of years, not generations. The world was vast, but the threads connecting human knowledge were thin and easily broken. Red ochre, ground to powder and mixed with liquid, stains the floor of Blombos Cave on the southern coast of Africa. Here, 100,000 years ago, early humans assembled a toolkit of quartzite grindstones, hammer stones, and abalone shells, each piece carefully chosen for its role in a chemical process. Archaeologists uncovered two complete ochre processing kits, each containing bone fragments used as stirs and shell containers for mixing and storing pigment. The ochre was not simply decoration. Analysis shows deliberate recipes and repeated use, suggesting knowledge passed down, refined, and remembered. Nearby, pieces of ochre bear geometric engravings, cross-hatched lines and chevrons, etched with purpose. These are among the oldest known examples of symbolic expression, predating the first cave paintings by tens of thousands of years. Across the Eurasian steppe, the mammoth bone dwellings at Mezurek in Ukraine rise from the frozen ground 15,000 years ago. One house, constructed from 149 mammoth bones, 
forms a circular structure nearly five meters across. Jawbones arch above the entrance, while skulls line the foundation. Inside, traces of ochre and charcoal mark the hearth, and the remains of painted mammoth skulls suggest ritual or music, evidence of drums, perhaps, or early performance. Building such a shelter required not only strength, but planning, cooperation, and a shared vision. The bones were scavenged from across the landscape, gathered over years, then arranged with architectural precision to withstand the harsh winters. Neither site stands alone. Each reveals minds capable of abstraction, memory, and imagination. The pigment workshop at Blombos and the engineered dwellings at Mezrich show that the capacity for complex thought and collective action long preceded farming, writing, or cities. The stereotype of the brute, confined to simple tools and brute force, dissolves in the face of these discoveries. The true puzzle is not why progress stalled for so long, but why such capable minds waited millennia for their inventions to ripple outward. 12,000 years ago, along the edges of the Levant and Zagros Mountains, families gathered to tend the world's first cultivated plots. The wild stands of einkorn and barley, once scattered across open hillsides, began to shrink as people returned season after season, scattering seeds from the best harvests into the soft earth. Hearths that once flickered in temporary camps now glowed in the same place for years at a time. The scent of roasting grain drifted from stone-lined ovens, and baskets of gathered seeds grew heavier with each passing harvest. Goats and sheep lingered near encampments, gradually shifting from wary prey to the first managed herds. These early fields demanded constant attention, watering, weeding, protecting shoots from hungry animals, Yet they offered something new, a surplus that could be stored, shared, or traded. Within a few generations, daily life transformed. No longer tied to the endless search for wild food, people began to specialize in new tasks. The landscape itself bore the imprint of their labor, signaling the dawn of a rooted existence and the first steps toward division of labor. 9,000 years ago, along the Illinois River, daily life at the Coster site revolved around more than just survival. Here, evidence of woven nets and specialized fish processing tools points to a new kind of planning, one that stretched across seasons. Excavations revealed ground stone metates, heavy enough to anchor a kitchen, used to grind seeds and nuts in quantities far beyond immediate need. In the same layers, archaeologists found storage pits lined with bark, designed to keep surplus food safe through the lean months. These stockpiles freed some hands from the fields and rivers, allowing a handful of villagers to focus on craftwork. Bone fish hooks and carefully shaped projectile points, crafted from non-local chert, hint at emerging artisan roles in the beginnings of long-distance trade. At Coster, Surplus created options. Nets could be repaired instead of replaced. Tools could be honed to a finer edge. And knowledge could be passed from one specialist to another. As food security grew, so did the web of skills and exchanges that tied these early communities together, setting the stage for knowledge to build, link by link, across generations. Scientific discovery has a rhythm all its own, one that compounds, multiplies, and rarely moves in a straight line. By the 17th century, a new breed of investigator began to see knowledge as something to be built, brick by brick, through experiment, debate, and relentless questioning. The Royal Society, founded in 1660, published its first journal just five years later, inviting critical scrutiny and replication. Over time, these journals became the engine room of progress, each paper a thread in a growing tapestry of ideas. 
Today, the number of scientific publications doubles roughly every 15 years, a pace that would have been unimaginable to Newton or Darwin. Peer review, once a radical notion, evolved into the gatekeeper of credibility. Patents, first formalized in Venice in 1474 and later embraced by Britain and the United States, protected inventors while encouraging them to share their methods. This delicate balance between openness and reward fueled a culture where rivalry and collaboration could coexist. Scientific societies and journals became global, linking researchers from Tokyo to Paris to Buenos Aires. The result, discoveries in one field could spark revolutions in another, and the velocity of breakthrough began to outpace the speed of a single lifetime. What ties these developments together is the emergence of an operating system for human curiosity, a set of rules, incentives, and institutions that allow knowledge to accumulate, correct itself, and leap across continents. The guilds of artisans who once guarded their secrets gave way to communities of researchers, each new generation standing on the shoulders of the last. Within this framework, the pace of change no longer depended on the lifespan of an individual or the memory of a village. Instead, it became a function of how quickly ideas could be tested, shared, and improved. The result is a world where progress, once measured in centuries, now accelerates with every passing decade. The world's appetite for energy has grown at a pace that would have been unimaginable to our ancestors. In 1820, global consumption hovered near 23 exajoules per year, with most of that drawn from wood, muscle, and wind. By 2020, the figure had soared to nearly 580 exajoules, a 25-fold increase in just two centuries. Fossil fuels now supply the vast majority, powering everything from city lights to worldwide logistics. The intricate web of infrastructure, thousands of power plants, millions of kilometers of transmission lines, data centers humming day and night, forms a hidden backbone for daily life. Every transaction, every message, every meal depends on these networks functioning without interruption. Yet the scale of this system brings new vulnerabilities. Modern civilization relies on a constant flow of electricity, fuel, and information, all synchronized across continents. A single point of failure, whether in the grid, supply chains, or digital networks, can ripple outward, disrupting lives at a scale no previous generation faced. Resource limits, from rare minerals to fresh water, add new layers of uncertainty. The momentum of progress, once so hard won, now feels both exhilarating and precarious. As the pace accelerates, the question lingers. How long can this trajectory last before the system demands something different? The answer may depend not just on ingenuity, but on choices yet to be made. For over 99% of human history, our species advanced at a glacial pace. Archaeological evidence shows the same basic stone tool design was used for nearly 100,000 years, while population densities hovered around 0.4 people per square kilometer. Sites like Terra Amata and Schöningen, Schöningen, reveal the skill and organization of early humans, yet progress was stalled by thin populations and mobility. The Blombos Cave Pigment Toolkit and Mezirich, Mezirich, mammoth bone dwellings confirm that cognitive ability was not the barrier. It was only with the advent of agriculture, roughly 12,000 years ago, that stable food supplies and permanent settlements allowed knowledge to accumulate and specialization to flourish. The modern era's exponential growth marked by scientific publication doubling every 15 years 
and a 20-fold increase in global energy use since 1800 is unprecedented. Still, historians note that many details about the timing and spread of early innovations remain unresolved. The record makes clear, human progress depends not just on invention, but on the networks and stability that allow ideas to connect and build. Our present acceleration stands on foundations laid by countless generations, and its sustainability remains an open, evidence-based question. <laughs>